the Kawanishi H6K Mavis, a mammoth flying boat with four mighty engines, took center stage during the World War II's early Pacific War. From its humble origins as a product of Western influence, this aircraft evolved into an industry leader through collaboration between Kawanishi and the renowned British aircraft maker Short Brothers. Embark on a journey back to the 1930s where visionary designers led by the Yoshio Hashiguchi and Shizuki Kahura crafted the extraordinary 86K Mavis. With its impressive 131-foot wingspan, parasol wing design and V-shaped struts, this aviation wonder was truly a sight to behold. Join me as we explore the legacy of the Kawanishi 86K Mavis, an embodiment of innovation, adaptability and the unwavering spirit of progress in the skies. The Kawanishi H6K Mavis, a large four-engine flying boat, served during World War II and was an important component of the early Pacific War. The Imperial Japanese Navy took advantage of its performance by importing and replicating Western seaplanes in flying boats. Kawanishi became a production industry leader and worked with the British firm Short Brothers. Kawanishi attempted with their own prototypes to respond to the Navy's experimental huge flying boat request in 1933. Despite being futile, the Navy recognized Kawanishi's effort by issuing a one-of-a-kind specification for a monoplane flying boat dubbed Type A. A team of designers led by Yoshio Hashiguchi and Shizuki Gahura visited the Short Brothers business and came up with this idea. The Japanese Navy developed the H6K two years later, a large aircraft with a 131-foot parasol wing linked to the shape through V-shaped struts. The Nakajima Hikari II nine-cylinder air-cooled radial engines first powered the H6K. However, following its maiden flight on July 14, 1936, the H6K was discovered to be underpowered. The Navy fitted a new Mitsubishi Kansai 43 engine a 14-cylinder air-cooled engine rated at 1,000 horsepower and the aircraft went into service in January 1938. The H6K-1 was the first Japanese flying boat to see combat during the Sino-Japanese War, exhibiting superior range, navigational skills and stability on land and sea. However, its flaws included a low cruising speed of 130 miles per hour and inherent fragility. From 1939 until 1942, the H6K-4 variant, sometimes known as the Model 2-2, was created to overcome these concerns. To improve defenses, this variant roughly quadrupled the fuel capacity and featured blistered fitted with 7.7mm Type 92 machine guns in the beam position. Type 292 machine guns were also hidden in the open bow in open dorsal positions. In the early phases of the Japanese attack, the Japanese Navy's H-6K-4 aircraft, nicknamed Mavis, were critical. They were unlikely to travel that far, which is roughly the distance between Tokyo, Japan and Cairns, Australia. With a maximum range of nearly 6,000 kilometers, the airplane featured an almost 26-hour flying time and sleeping accommodations. The Mavis assets are its flexibility and versatility since it can carry up to 1,000 kg of bombs or 800 kg of torpedoes. In the first year of the war, eight H-6K bombers operated as bombers and their powerful radios allowed them to communicate intelligence from smaller reconnaissance planes. Because of its extensive manufacturing time, it took a lot of time for Japan to manufacture these planes. The H-6K also functioned in transportation and medical evacuation. However, the Japanese Navy quickly encountered considerably stiffer position resulting in a scarcity of these planes. The Japanese Navy encountered considerably stiffer position when the prosperous period ended. The Task Force 11 attempted to bomb a Japanese facility in the east on February 20, 1942. The American task group was observed by a Mavis who announced its position. The Japanese crew, on the other hand, were unaware that the Lexington CXAM radar had already determined their location from 35 miles away. This allowed the American planes to lead two F-4F Wildcat fighters into the cloud cover, headed by Lieutenant Commander John Jimmy Thatch. 
They saw a massive wing with red disc not more than a thousand feet below. Hip. Being that close to an enemy aircraft for the first time was enough to set them running for cover. As it turns out, Thad's aim was dead on and as he ran into the Japanese flying boat, the aircraft crashed into the ocean and exploded with a massive fire. As a result, fires sprang out that could be seen from the deck of the Lexington ship which was almost 30 miles away. About half an hour later, another Mavis crashed and in a matter of moments, Japan had lost two planes and 18 people. That day it turned out to be a disaster for the Japanese as no fewer than 15 brand new G4M1 Betty bombers were shot down by fighters from Lexington. During the World War II, the Japanese aircraft H6K was unarmed and had minimal defensive capability, with only four machine guns and a 20mm cannon in the rear turret. The H6K-5 model, powered with Mitsubishi Kenzi 51 or 53 engines, could not keep the Mavis in service through the end of 1942. Despite this, it saw battle until the conclusion of the war. The H6K-2L and H6K-4L were built in quantities of 36 with fuel capacity storage, compartment in front and behind the cockpit, a galley, a midship cabin with 8 seats or 4 beds in an aft cabin with 10 extra seats. These aircraft models were utilized by Japan Airline for both military and commercial reasons. There were 250 Mavis produced across all times, but only a tiny number survived the war. The Mavis traded durability for speed, resulting in an outstanding combat aircraft. The Mavis demanded nine crew members constantly, an expense Japan could not afford. Even though the Mavis was vulnerable to attack, the Japanese Navy learned from their mistake and the H-8K Emily, which replaced her, was more fortified and had self-fueling tanks. The Emily certainly ranks among the greatest flying boats of the World War II. But aesthetic-wise, I think Mavis was more beautiful. As the curtains fall on the epic tale of the Kawanashi H-6K Mavis, its legacy stands as a testament to the heights of aviation ingenuity during World War II. From its early days as a Western-inspired creation, the H-6K Mavis rose to the prominence as a steward of the Imperial Japanese Navy's fleet. With its remarkable adaptability and enduring spirit, this flying boat left an indeniable mark on both land and sea. Yet, Despite its strength and the strategic role it played, the Mavis would ultimately face challenges that underscored the delicate balance between speed and durability. As history turned its pages, the Mavis transitioned from the front lines to the new roles, leaving a trail of innovation that echoed far beyond its wartime services. Thanks for watching. I have more similar videos on my channel that you may like. See you guys in the next video.